Hello my gorgeous loves out there and welcome. In today's video, I'm actually going to be ranking all the palettes I tried in 2023. This video might be long because there's like over 60 palettes to go over, but I will try to make it quick and give you guys all of my like final thoughts and everything. But before we get into this video, if you're new here, hello, welcome, my name is Brie, and I'm just a crazy lover of all things beauty and I like to post a lot of fun, colorful makeup content. I like to do a lot on any makeup, so if that is what you're into, then please hit that subscribe button and join this little family. But with that being said, let's get into this video. All right, loves, welcome. Like I said, I have a lot of palettes to go over, so I'm gonna try to be really quick. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on each palette since I have 60 or over 60 to uh, like talk about in today's video. Now, how I do this ranking is I base it on different things, whether it's color story, likelihood that I'm gonna use it, how unique it is to my collection, if I like love or don't love the quality, just different reasons like this, just all based on my personal preferences when it comes to makeup. So now, before we get into this ranking, if you're curious about this eye look, which I did film it, this video like for this look will probably come up after this one, but I am wearing the Lands of Enchantment palette from Ensley Rain Cosmetics. It's gorgeous. I love this very ethereal look, just in case you're curious on what I'm wearing. I'll also link my makeup below in the description. I always do that in case you wanna check it out for yourself. So now let's get into this ranking. So at the very bottom, sorry to say this, but Adept Cosmetics ended up being at the bottom and it's the Ketracel White Palette. This is kind of like a face and eye palette in one, but since I've reviewed this, I have not touched it at all. I have no desire to touch it. I just don't think I am the right person for this palette. There's these two overly creamy highlighters that don't really work on my skin type. I'm a very oily skin person. And then these two right here, are like these rainbow pants, this is more like an iridescent shifty highlighter. I have tons of those in my collection that I would probably use over this one. And then this one, which I would use is eyeshadows. The strips are so little that it's hard to get each individual color. And then if I mix it up, it'd be too dark to really be a highlighter on me. So I just see myself not using this and I probably will end up decluttering it and it was a pricey palette. I feel like it was maybe like $60 for this little guy. Then the next one at the bottom of the ranking is the Simply Posh Cosmetics palette. This is a Citrus Punch palette. And the reason why this is on the lower end is because of the formula when it comes to the metallics. All of these right here have really bad hard pan on them. I don't know if you guys can see. Like look how bad that is. It's so hard to lift up these metallics. I'll go into one. Barely anything comes up. I have to constantly like scrape the top off. And because of that, it makes me not want to use it. And I mean, I like the mattes in here, but they're not like my most favorite matte formula either. So I rather just reach for a palette that has good metallics and mattes in these colors over this one. Now going on to this one from Adept Cosmetics. Another one at the bottom, it's the La Cien Nega palette. This is supposed to be like their nudie palette in their range. And I just didn't love the metallics in here. Like these three right here are very scratched. They, they almost feel like putting on a pressed glitter even though they're not pressed glitters. Very textured, they got super thick, they creased on my lids really bad. And then I feel like the mattes don't really go or like the shimmers don't really go with the mattes so I just don't feel like the color story is very cohesive or makes a lot of sense. Then going on to this one from Colourpop which I'm just realizing Colourpop doesn't have my favorite formula and I think they're good for the price but I rather reach for my other indie palettes over this one and I have a lot of palettes with this color story. It's the Aurora Strap palette and it's full of these beautiful like dusty lavenders and cool tones and grays, which I love these shades, but there's so many indie palettes that I have that have this color story, like the Land of Enchantment palette that I just got from NC Rain. And I'm totally gonna go over to this one over this one because the formula is just so much better. And this one is more of a buildable matte formula. The shimmers in here are a little bit more lackluster. They're not super intense and sparkly. So I just see myself not reaching for this. And then this one right here from Lethal Cosmetics is the Two Up palette. To me, the quality was lacking in this one as well. And normally I really love Lethal's formula, but the mattes just weren't that great in here. Some of them were very sheer, it was hard to build. I kept having to dig into the pan to try to get any color payoff. I uh, also think the color story is kind of lacking and I also don't like the empty space in the packaging. I feel like I really bought this more for the theme 
and the whole packaging like all this like nostalgia here more for the actual color story now going on to this palette from gourmand girls which is a brand i also love but there was some issues with this secret grove palette now overall i think it's cute it's a little grunge but i do feel like there was some redundancy in this palette like i don't think these two shades were necessary also felt like we didn't need all these greens right here like maybe switch out these two shades because they kind of look the same once you put them on the lids also had a hard time with this kinoko shade it was a little sheer a little patchy wasn't my favorite and overall i just feel like it's just not the most cohesive color story and i wish that maybe there was more metallics in here too because i really like the metallic formula from gourmand girl so i don't feel as inspired and i feel like there's just other grungy color story palettes in my collection that I would probably reach over for than this one. Now going on to this one from Glamlight. There's nothing necessarily wrong with this one. I just don't gravitate towards it for some reason. It's a very dark palette, you know, mid-tones to very dark shades. Well, honestly, the only mid-tone really is this one. And the metallics are also really dark. So I don't have any lightning shades, anything I could use for inner corner highlight. This is more of a companion palette. I also have a lot of palettes that have these kind of colors already in them. Like my one from Give Me Glow, the Bad Witch Club palette. I have the new Bella Butte Bar Bejewel palette that has some really intense shifty gorgeous metallics in it so i rather go towards that palette over this one so i feel like it's a little redundant towards my collection and i just don't really use it i think i've used it twice and i never think about it then i have some Uden side palettes at the bottom which i just recently picked these up and reviewed them but i have the Uden's eye snow dream palette this was part of their like a uh, christmas collection for 2023 it just did not live up to the ones that they came out with in 2022. it's very light it doesn't have really any depth I felt like the mattes and the shimmers don't totally go together. I wish that maybe they put like a purple matte in here, uh, added some depth. We didn't need these two like light, warm, beigey shades. Also, they're metallic that has like the little holochrome shimmers. Kind of acts like a pressed glitter, like shimmer just goes everywhere, gets in your hair, on your face. And when you try to get this off, it just spreads the shimmer everywhere. I had to try so hard to remove this shade. So I really do feel like maybe they need to improve this holochrome formula that they came up with. Because I think it's new to this palette. So overall, I just found the palette underwhelming, not exciting. And that brings me to the other... Um, Uden side palette, the Hey Reindeer one. I like this one a little better because there was one deepening shade and I felt like the color story was a little bit more cohesive and made more sense in this one, but still I find it pretty underwhelming, kind of lackluster. Even though the formula is really good, the metallics are great, the mattes are great. I just think overall the color story needs more. It just needs more depth. It needs a little bit more interest. So I just felt like they fell short with these two palettes. Then I also have this one from Glaminatrix. This is a sugar and spice palette palette it's a beautiful nudie palette with a kind of an easter twist which is different i just feel like the mattes in here aren't my favorite because it goes from either really light pastel mattes to really dark mattes there's nothing really in between to work as a transition and I don't know, I just don't feel as inspired by this palette, even though the formula is amazing. Then I put a nudie palette above that one because I really like this color store when it comes to nudes. It's cool tone, it's smoky, it's the Glam Light Hershey's Cookies and Cream palette. I think the quality is really nice, and if I'm going to reach for nudie shades, I'm going to reach for these kind of nudie shades. Smoky, cool tone just sexiness in a palette and I love that they included some lighter shimmers to work as inner corner highlights and I think it's really pretty. I, I like the additions of the blues and the grays in here. It makes it a little bit more interesting than your normal cool tone nude palette. Then going on to this one from Made by Mitchell. This is the Head in the Clouds palette. This is an older palette but I tried it last year but it has all these beautiful springy colors. I really like this more for the mattes. They're really nice it's a good formula blendable works really well with a lot of my like singles because i don't really love the metallics in here they're more on the satin leaning side so i tend to use this for the mattes and pair it with like my single metallics or like my all shimmer palettes 
because I like those shimmers better and then I pair it with these beautiful springy mattes. But overall, I think it was a really good buy. I got it on a super good deal for like Black Friday. And then I also have this one right here from Glam Light. It's the Barbie palette. For some reason, this palette also I don't find as inspiring. It's overall very dark mid-tone to darker. There's no lightning shades. I like palettes that are a little bit more versatile that have a good range from depth to mid-tone to lighter shades. I feel like I just will gravitate towards those ones over a palette that's a little too one tone. Now I do like the colors in here. I do like the quality in here. So I need to get myself to use this because I do like the formula and I do like the colors. Then I have this one from Girl Mom Girls. This was a collab with Syria Salto. This is a very pinky romantic palette. I think it's really pretty. I thought the quality was really nice in here. I love the different red tones in here. It's just this one, you can't do as much with it. It's going to be more of a purple berry palette and like in that kind of color range, but I still think it was really high quality. Then I have this one from Letho. This is their, I think, Wildflower collection. I thought this was a gorgeous springy palette. The quality is excellent in this one. Great pigmented mattes, beautiful, like pastel-y, shifty metallics. It's a gorgeous spring palette. It's on the lighter end with a little bit of depth, some mid-tones, but it's definitely on the springy end. Then I have this one from It's Bell Cosmetics. This is the Fruity Realm palette. Now, I don't tend to gravitate towards all matte palettes, but I thought this was a really good high quality matte formula. It's fun. It's bright. I love pairing this with my metallics, my pigments, you know, my like loose shadows as they had Fruity Realm pigments that they came out with before this palette that goes so well with this. And overall, I like the range in here and I love like the neon -y vibes and the pops. I tend to pull this in a lot with other palettes. It's an amazing companion palette if you're looking for some really nice, fun, bright mattes. And I have this one from Oud Inside. This is the Flora Story palette. It's definitely a softer, like a uh, springy muted palette. I think it's really pretty. And overall, I did really enjoy using it. I do wish that there was a little bit more depth and you can only do so much with this palette. You can only really go like purple or green, but I still really enjoy it. The formula is excellent. This was a collab with Makeup Just For Fun. Then I have this one from Oud Inside. This was a collab with the Batty Bean. This is the Planet Spirit palette. This is a beautiful, vibrant palette. Now it doesn't have a lot of depth and it doesn't have a lot of light shades. This one right here though works as like an inner corner highlight, but it's the vibrancy of this palette that I love so much. It makes me happy looking at it. Like I just think of spring and summer and like uh, flowers and gardens. And I think that's why I love it so much. And then I have this one from Shroud. It's the Moonfall palette. It's a beautiful jewel tone palette. I think this is the perfect size for a jewel tone palette, especially if you're just wanting to add some more jewel tones to your collection. It's a nice little curated jewel tone palette and the quality is really nice in here. I really love the metallics most of all. I feel like the mattes are a little bit more on the buildable end, not necessarily my favorite matte formula, but I love the color story. I love the metallics and I just love how curated it is. I think it's just a, a perfect little setup. Then I have this one from, uh, what is this? Unearthly Cosmetics. This is their Surrender palette. It was in their Valentine's Day mystery box. This is a beautiful, romantic Valentine's Day color story, the berries the reds, the pinks. I love doing red and pink looks. Just, I can't do a lot with this. And I have to be in a certain mood to go for like the berries. I tend to go for like a lot of color. I tend to go towards more cool tones, blues and greens. So this one is not a color store I go to quite often. I have to be in like a specific mood to use this, but I think it's gorgeous and beautiful. Hello loves, this is a future Brie coming at ya. I'm actually still in my work clothes, so it's also a work Brie that you're getting, work makeup. I've had this makeup on for over 12 hours, but I realized I forgot to mention a palette in this ranking, so I'm gonna insert it here now, and it is the Spaced Out palette from Unearthly Cosmetics. This was in their small, summer mystery box and i was like how did i forget to include that in the ranking this is such a cute little curated color story but you can do quite a bit with this even though it's an eight pen palette you got some greens some peachy pinks here you even got some browns some blue so you could 
do, I feel like a good amount of looks with just this little guy right here. Quality is excellent, and I think that's pretty dang good for a little palette like this. So just wanted to make sure I included this in the rain, but now we can get back to past Brie. Then going on to this other smaller curated palette. This is from Wicked Widow Beauty. This is the Graveyard Smash Palette. Honestly, I wish this was a bigger palette because I love the formula in here and I love the tones. It's a little grungy. It's so pretty, but you can do a good amount of things with this. You can go kind of orangey brown. You can go green and brown. You can go into some of this grungy shades here. You can go purple if you want to. You can go like bluish green if you want to or blue and uh, not blue, but green and purple. So it's pretty versatile for being a little guy here and then you have a perfect shade for the inner corner you have some mid-tones you have a deepening shade so you have everything you need to create a completed look with this and i just love wicked widow's formula and then going on to this one also from unearthy that was in their bigger summer mystery box it's a beautiful rainbow color story it's high quality i just have a lot of rainbow palettes in my collection so it's not very unique to what I already have. I have so many rainbow palettes because I love a lot of color, but it's a nice condensed rainbow palette, a good travel rainbow palette that's great to like pair with others palettes if you want to pull in some color, mix it with some neutrals, or you're just needing like an easy palette to travel with that has a lot of color. This is a good one. Now going on to a bigger grunge palette that I love, love, love for the mattes in here. It's the ultimate grungy matte palette. This is from Made by Mitchell. This is the feet on the ground one. I use this a lot for all these gorgeous mattes, these grungy greens, these yellows. Oh, they're just so beautiful. And then you have some purples in here. You have a little bit of gray. I use this a lot to pair with my singles and with my all shimmer palettes or if I'm just needing to pull in some grungy tones, I use this quite a bit. Even though it doesn't look like I use it, I do use it a lot. I've traveled with this. I love it. And that's why I ranked it up so high because I'm a grungy tone lover. And I think the mattes are really nice in here. The shimmers in this one too is leaning satiny, kind of like the uh, uh, head in the clouds one. But the mattes, they're beautiful. And then the next palette is also a grungy palette. And I think I just love this one a little bit more. It's the Cosmic Dreamer palette from NC Rain. This is a beautiful, grungy, little smoky palette. It's on the more muted grunge side. It's not as, I think, bright as the mattes that are in the Made by Mitchell palette. It's on that more muted end. So it's a little bit of a different take on a grungy palette, but you do have some blues some teals. I think this is great if you like nudie shades and you're trying to incorporate like color into your life. This is a good one. There's some like black based multi-chromes in here, some more flaky shades. There's a lot of like more satiny shades in here too. I really do love this most of all for the mattes, but there are some intense shimmers in here. Like this beautiful like limey green, which I love using that as an inner corner. It's intense, but then you have like these little softer, smoother ones. So if you do like some satiny shades too, because you don't like the enhanced texture, you would probably like a lot of these satiny shades in here as well. Then going on to this one from Gourmand Girls. It's the Silent Night palette. This was their like Christmas launch. It's beautiful. The quality is excellent. The metallics are intense in here. This is just a little bit more of a specific color story. You have your blues, yellows, and browns. And that's basically it. So you can go in either of those directions. So it's limited in how much you can do unless you like pull in other palettes and other like colors from other palettes. But the quality is excellent. Then going on to this one, which is pretty new to my collection, but I thought the quality was excellent. It's the What's Up Beauty Dragon Eye palette. Now, the reason why this hasn't ranked up higher is because it's a little bit more on the muted nudie side. But if it was a little bit more colorful, I think I would have ranked it higher because the quality is out of this world. The mattes in here are very creamy and buttery and the metallics are really beautiful and shifty and creamy. They're gorgeous. I just wish that they had a little bit more color. I feel like we had switched out some of these muted shades and maybe put like a green in here or like a limey green matte or I don't know, broke it up a little bit 
more and made it a little bit more interesting i probably would have ranked this higher because the quality is excellent and i feel like this is kind of similar to some of their other palettes that are already in the range so i just still hope that they come out with something a little bit more interesting a little bit more bold for their next palette then going on to this one from unearthy cosmetics the dead of the night palette it's a beautiful more jewel tone palette and i love it see i would gravitate to this one more than like the one i showed you from glam like the scooby-doo one or i would reach for these tones over the barbie palette for some reason i just think they have a really good matte formula i definitely prefer the mattes from unearthy more than glam light and their shimmers so they usually include dual chromes and more shifty shimmers and i thought this was just a really beautiful color story and it's not too big i think it's the perfect curated jewel toned palette really pretty then i have this one from oud inside this is the jewels and gems palette it's a beautiful cool tone palette with a little bit of muted color in here the quality is excellent this is my go-to when it comes to nudie palettes i like some muted colors and i love me my cool tones i love that i can go smoky i love that i could also go rosy in here or if i want to go into the blues i can do that so there is a little bit more variety in here quality is excellent i think this was their take on a more nudie palette for their range and they did such a great job i'm going on to this one from oud inside which is a curated color story but something about this palette is so special it's the c top palette from oud inside this was a collab with lauren may beauty this I don't know what it is about this palette, but I find it so beautiful. The formula is so gorgeous. And I think just the array of tones mixed together just makes it a little unique and interesting. Like the mix with the brown and like the blues, we got this pink. And then this electric kelp shade, which is a satin, is so beautiful in the inner corner. It's like a brightening pop it's striking and it's pretty and it goes so well with the brown tones and even the blue tones in here and then the metallics are so gorgeous and i love these muted blues i don't know i find something really different about this i find this very unique and like the tones are just so appealing now going on to this one from glaminatrix which i think is a really pretty palette it's the into the night palette i think this is actually quite unique of a color story i love the bright pops in here like this bright pink this bright neon -y, like yellowy green shade is so beautiful then the sage shade there's depth in here the metallics are really beautiful i don't have anything exactly like this in my collection so i feel like it brings something new and the bright pops with some of the muted grungy tones i don't know i just find it so interesting and inspiring it makes me think of all these different looks i could come up with it makes me want to mix up different things that i wouldn't think to mix together now going on to this one from Uden's Eye. this is the little ghost palette it was a collab with angelica nikovis this is beautiful it's gorgeous it has a fun little mix of tones purples we got some blues some orange the quality is excellent you got your depth your brightening shades inner corner highlight pops it's a fun color story i think the packaging was fun then going on to a more nudie color story and a more smoky color story, but it's sexy, it's saturated, it's smoky. It's the Chucky palette from Glam Light. These rich, saturated tones just make me so excited. They excite me. This is like a date night palette. This is like a going out to a vampy night on the town. You wanna look smoky, you wanna look like a boss lady. Like that's the vibe I get from this palette. I have like these deep burgundies, these deep rich purple tones you got the black the grays you have a little bit of a like a mauviness right here i just think the tones are really beautiful and i love this take for a chucky palette i don't know it just came out so gorgeous i was really blown away by this one then i have this one right here which i rank this up pretty high even though it's like a very specific color story but the quality chef's kiss this is the gothic palette from uh, uh cosmic brushes i think they're turning into cosmic beauty like they're changing their name but look at this it's very romantic it gives you a little bit of like gothicness too but on the purple side the quality is excellent you have a little bit of pastel you have like these 
gorgeous shimmers. You have like this really intense shifty multi-chrome in here, this beautiful rich purple. Like if I'm going for a berry purple palette, I would totally reach for this over a lot of other ones that are already in my collection. Then going on to this one from Unearthy, it's the Devour palette, a gorgeous kind of grungy palette. I love the tones in here. I love these iridescent metallics. The greens, you got some burgundies, you got some purple, some cool tone taupey browns, you got depth. I think it's an amazing color story. This was in their Halloween mystery box from 2023. Beautiful. And you can actually buy this separately. So it's a palette that I think is going to be a part of their permanent range now. And I love that they offer that. It's not only from the mystery box. So you can still pick this up. It's a beautiful, more grungy, muted color palette, and the quality is excellent. Then going on to this one from Lethal Cosmetics, which is a more muted, nudie palette, but I love it. It's one of my favorite palettes from Lethal. The tones in here are so rich, saturated. There's these really beautiful, shifty metallics in here that are super sparkly. I find it very sexy but sophisticated with a little bit of color it's not boring it's high quality now going on to this one from nomad which is also a more muted nudie palette but also gives me sultry sexy vibes it is the ghost town palette and the formula absolutely amazing in here some of the best from nomad the mattes are pigmented in here blendable and then they have these super foiled sparkly metallics. I think this is also a new metallic formula for them. And I love the variety in here. You've got your greens, you've got some muted blues, you have some nudie shades over here and cool tone and warm tones. So you can do like a good amount of color with this, but you can also go quite nude. And I think this is a very approachable palette for someone who doesn't necessarily always use color and also a palette that a color lover would enjoy as well. Then going on to this palette right here from Gourmand Girls. We're almost there guys, we're almost getting to the end. I have the Haunted palette, which I think this is really beautiful. It's a mix of purples with grunge shades high quality like gourmand girls is a really good formula this is also a collab with doodles by the bunny and i like the grungy twist to this i like the limey green i like the mattes now overall i i don't feel like you have anything truly as inner corner highlight maybe this one i can pull off yeah this one i can use as an inner corner highlight and this limey green one but if you have a lighter skin tone than me it's overall going to be on the darker end but this purple green grungy twist kind of palette is so beautiful. Now I'm going on to this one from Unearthy as well. It is their Don't Be Jelly palette. So they revamped their Don't Be Jelly palette and did something a little different at matte. Since their original Don't Be Jelly palette was an all shimmer palette. But look at how pretty this is. The cool tones, I love the mints in here. The purples, the blues, the soft iridescent shifty, like multi-chromes and dual chromes that are in here. It's really beautiful. I think this was such a well done revamped palette. Like I love this way more than their original Don't Be Jelly one. It's really good. Then going on to this one from Unearthy. This was a collab with Heather Austin. I think that this is such a unique color story that that's why I think I ranked it up pretty high because I think this is different. I love like the bright neon pop in here. Then you have these smoky cool tone shades. Then you have some reds and pinks down here with a fun little pop of blue. Some a little bit of like purple in here. It's just different, but high quality, gorgeous metallics. The packaging is absolutely stunning. Then I have this one from Glamlight, which is the Scooby-Doo palette, which I didn't think I was gonna love this as much, but when I started using it, I realized I really love the options in here. You have grunge, you have muted shades, you have some bright, fun colors, teals, greens, oranges. It's like a muted rainbow palette, which is different because the rainbow palettes in my collection are usually really bright 
and vibrant or like primary colors. So this more muted take on a rainbow palette, I really enjoy. I like what it brings to my collection. The quality is really good. And you can just do so many different looks with this. Then going on to this one from Blend Bunny, which is a older release from them, but I tried this palette this year, the Blends palette. The one that everyone lost their mind over, probably their most popular palette in their whole collection because the quality is so good. If you're needing your go-to matte palette, this is it. It has everything you need from lighter, pastel, mid-tones, deepening shades. I like to pair this with like my all shimmer palettes from Adept, the one from Cleona. I've used this together. If I need a certain color that a palette I'm using is lacking, I will reach for this one. You also have a matte white, a matte black excellent and it's so hard for an all matte palette to rank super high up there for me so that's how you know this is a super good one then going on to adept cosmetics it's the sumerian sunset palette this is a beautiful sunset palette a beautiful warm tone palette with some berries in it i thought the matte overall was nice in here but i really love the metallics now there are some things that I would change in here, but because the quality is so like good with the metallics and they're so intense and foiled is why I ranked this up so high, but I do feel like there's a lot of like kind of red leaning tones. I wish that there was like a true green shifty shade in here, like a true olive green metallic would have been gorgeous. But besides that, I still think it's really high quality and maybe if there was one darker matte and I thought the mattes were pretty good in here. Like, they were nice and blendable and creamy and matched really well with the tones that are in this palette. So I was happy overall with the matte. Then going on to Uden's Eye, I have this one from the Angelica collab that they did for Halloween, the Trick or Treat palette. This was the other one besides the little ghost one. I like this one even more because of the tones in here. It's a little bit more grungy and bright, very cohesive, very up my alley with the mix of the grungy tones with some like burgundy shades, some orange, some nudie shades. I think this is beautiful, high quality. Then going on to this one from the collab with Doodles by the Bunny and Girl Mom Girls, the Nightshade palette. I love this, it's beautiful, it's very purple. Then you have these fun like yellow pops in here. Quality is excellent and I love me my purples and greens so I'll always be happy with a purpley greeny palette. Really good, high quality. Now I have this one from It's Belle. This is the Pixie Rose palette. I think this is such a gorgeous, unique take on a grungy palette, a beautiful fall color story. I like these grungy tones with these mattes right here these minty ones and this minty metallic i just thought that was different because most grungy palettes don't have a mint shade in it and they paired so nicely with this palette gorgeous little inner corner highlights super high quality and i love me a grungy palette now going on to this palette right here from Uden side this is their stone and rock palette this is a more nudie muted color story but on the green grunge end and you know me I love me my greens, I love me my grunge, I love the quality in here, I love the tones, I love the rich saturated shades over here, the really deep cool tone brown, you have a black, you have this foiled black grayish charcoal metallic. If you want to do like a galaxy smoky look, you can totally use a shade like this, even top some like glitter over it to do something just so smoky. That would look so good all over the lid. With like a bright pop mm, that would make the sexiest most little smoky look but this is gorgeous and then i have an all shimmer palette which is from cleona it's the deep sea treasures palette this is just as high quality as their stained glass singles which i love so much my favorite singles in my collection so that's why i rank this so high up there this has been used so much i can't believe how much I reach for this palette. I put this in my makeup bag going to work. I've paired this with so many other palettes because these are just so beautiful, shifty, intense, like multi-chrome, dual-chrome shades that are just breathtaking. And it's a fun little curated palette. It's easy to travel with. And I just love using this. I reach for this quite a bit. If I just wanna go in with some nudie mattes and then go in with an interesting shimmer, I have this little guy right here. And I'm telling you guys, for a small little all shimmer palette, this has been well used, super high quality. Then I have this one from Blend Bunny. It is the 
Sugar and Grunge palette, a beautiful little color story here. It's got some grungy tones, some pastels. I really love Blend Bunny's formula. Their mattes are excellent. I love their creamy metallics that they have in here. I love how they set up the rows. It's so easy to think of what you can come up with. There's so many options in here. It's a little bit more of a muted color story, but it has a good range and you have everything you need to do completed looks. Then going on to Cosmic Brushes, this is the Musée palette. This was their take on a more muted palette excellent quality super gorgeous it's a garden grunge palette which seems to be something that i'm really into so i really like that i like the muted tones in here i like the range and cosmic brushes i swear has some of the best eyeshadows like they're so good then going on to another adept palette which this is my go-to pastel shimmer palette it is the seahorse palette which has all these gorgeous pastel metallics they're really special you have different shifts in here i love using this with like the uh, head in the clouds palette from made by mitchell or using this with like some of my all matte palettes or if i need a lighter shade like a lot of these palettes i showed you that are more mid-tone and darker i will pull this palette in to get me that inner corner highlight that i need or a brightening shade for the lid super beautiful formula quality different textures in here then going on to this one from Adept Cosmetics, this is their Element 115 palette, which I recently reviewed and I love, love the metallics in here. They're so sparkly. I feel like the metallics in here are a little bit more smoother, not as flaky and chunky and overly uh, creamy as some of their other palettes. Like the Sumerian Sunset palette, like their shimmers are so putty-like that you dig in them and instantly form a depth and it's easy to go through those kind of metallics. These ones were a little bit drier, but in a good way. Like they're easier to use, more user-friendly shimmers, and they're so sparkly intense. And I thought the mattes were really nice. They paired really nicely with the metallics in here, have a good range. So I think the selection of mattes made a lot of sense with this palette as well. Now going on to another palette from Blend Bunny. It is the Lore palette beautiful gorgeous this one has some jewel tones but there's pastels these beautiful metallics in here it's a little bit more curated like a smaller one versus some of their bigger palettes i love the rose it's easy to figure out what to do it's high quality it's beautiful and it's gorgeous now i have this one from nz rain we have the strawberry moon palette I love this most of all for the metallics in here. They're so beautiful and foiled and wet looking on the lids and all these like gorgeous colors. Like look at that. That's why this ranked up high because I love, I love the metallic formula from NC Rain. And they have so many different metallic formulas and they're all so good so shifty and beautiful and foiled then going on to this one from bella beat bar the recently de-influenced palette super beautiful high quality i like the range the mattes are excellent there's all these shifty intense metallics that are so pretty and foiled like bella beat bar is really good at making really interesting intense metallics and then their matte formula has improved so much since like their was it the Celestial Garden palette? Like they really amped up their mattes to be pigmented and blendable and really buttery. Now going on to this one from Nomad Cosmetics. This is the Royal Euro palette. One of the best palettes that they came out with in 2023. It is a jewel tone palette. Like I said, I have a lot of jewel tones. I would totally reach for this one over the like Barbie palette from Glam Light, the Scooby-Doo palette that I showed you, the Creeps and Crawls one. This is so high quality. Another really well done palette from Nomad. Super high quality mattes. And then they put these gorgeous rich multichromes that are shifty and their first time doing like true multichromes in a palette. And they're so good. Like look at that. And this wasn't like a super, super expensive palette. I think it was like $50. So to get like this whole row of like super intense multichromes is really amazing for the price that you paid with these 
amazing mattes. Now I'm going on to Cosmic Brushes. There was a lot of Cosmic Brushes palettes this year. The Delicious Delights palette. Now this is a beautiful pastel, bright, fun palette. There's some shifty multi-chromes. There's pastels in here. There's mid-tones. You have a lot of color. It's bright, it's fun, it's springy. It makes me happy and it's excellent. That is why it's so high up there on the ranking. Then I have another Cosmic Brushes palette. This is their Winter Wonderland palette. I think this is my most favorite palette from Cosmic Brushes or Cosmic Beauty, which they are now. Look at this so beautiful look at how gorgeous that is these cool tones the greens the purples the teals the pastels i would totally reach for this like over the aurora strap palette from ColourPop. like i said i have a lot of this already in my collection and this is so so good i love the looks that i was able to create very ethereal enchanting so pretty so sparkly so intense and shifty the adept cosmetics inspired palette this is my most favorite palette from Adept Cosmetics. These greens, these tones, then the grungy mattes, these foiled, creamy, gorgeous metallics. Oh, look at that. I love greens. Green is my favorite color to wear on my eyes and the formula is so beautiful in here, especially in the metallics. Like this is, a dreamy palette, especially if you love greens and multichromes and shifty shades. Now going on to this one from Blend Bunny. The Sickly Sweet palette, it's probably my most favorite pastel palette in my collection. The best pastel palette of all time that I've ever tried. So good. And I like this version of a pastel palette because they included deepening shades, they included mid-tones, light metallics, darker metallics. So it's not a one-trick pony. It's not only pastels. You can create depth. You can mix the pastels with the darker shades. You can do an all pastel look. You can do an all matte look with this, an all shimmer look. You can do so much with this and the quality of the pastels in here are so good. Some of the best I've ever tried. That's why I have to rank it so high up there because I have not tried a pastel palette that was this good before. Now going on to this one from Danessa Myers. This is this was their light work palette, their holiday palette, the I Am palette. This one is so good. It's an all metallic palette. It was number one on one of my rankings because look at these shades. They're so beautiful. There's different textures in here. Some are a little bit more like topper, satiny, flaky, foiled, shifty, but you have all these shades. It's a little bit more on the muted end for color. I think last year it was a little bit more jewel tone, a little bit more brighter with their all shimmer palette, but I love, love, love the formula in here. If you're looking for special metallics and you don't wanna have to take the time to buy singles, this is a perfect option. And I think you save money by going with this route. So the one from NC Rain, the Twisted Tea Party Palette. This is so good. A gorgeous little like kind of Alice in Wonderland themed palette. It's beautiful, but grungy. And the looks I came up with this one were so Stunning. I can't get over how beautiful the looks I was able to create with this palette came out. You have different textures in the metallics, flaky ones, holochromy ones, shifty ones, more smoother ones. And then you have these beautiful mattes. You have some grungy tones, some more cool tones in here. And the quality was just so good. Like they stepped it up, especially with their matte formula. Like the Cosmic Dreamer palette, I think the mattes are good, but they're nowhere near as pigmented and creamy and blendable as the mattes in here. Like they really, really amped up their matte formula too. And then I have another NC Rain palette, which is number four on the ranking, which is the Harvest Moon palette. This is the most dreamiest, grungiest, harvestesy. Is that even a word? Probably not. <laughs> palette. It's so beautiful. The tones in here, it's so rich and saturated. The masks are really good in here. You have all these different textures to work with. It's gorgeous. Now I know NC Rain is on the pricey side, but I think their palettes are all worth it because of the quality and what you get in here. And if you really enjoy special metallics and you want some good high quality mattes to pair with them, this is a good one. Then going on to number three in the ranking, which is the Wicked Widow Beauty palette. This is so good. This is their scissor hand palette too. Gorgeous, beautiful. Look, it has jewel tones, some pastels. 
The metallics in here are out of this world. It leans cool tone. You have a few little grungy pops in here, but like these metallics, like I don't know what Wicked Widow Beauty is doing, but they're also creating magic. Like look at that. And then I'll show you guys the mattes. Even though my fingers are so dirty, I have to show you. Like look at the mattes. They're so pigmented and gorgeous. So look at that. Look at these mattes. And then look at the shimmers. You don't even have to try. Look at that intensity and saturation. So, so good. Now we're going into number two. And this, this shocked me. I did not expect to love this palette as much as I ended up loving it. But it's the Rick and Morty palette from Glamlight. I had some really low on the ranking for Glamlight. And this one is number two on the ranking. It blew my mind. I raved about this so much because I think it's like the fun neon tones in here. Then you have mid-tones, you have depth, you have a lot you can do with this. And I like that they actually included lighter shades to work as inner corner highlights. And you have like these periwinkle shades that are beautiful, like this fun greens and blues and pinks. Like this is like my perfect rainbow palette. The neons, the depth, the range, the options. I can just do so much with this. And the quality is so good. Some of the best I've tried from Glamlight. Now number one, which this palette blew my mind and to me is the best, best, most special rainbow palette in my collection. And I've said a lot of these were great rainbow palettes, but this one takes the cake. The Resurrection Palette from Wicked Widow Beauty. There has never been a rainbow palette this good until this one. This is so high quality. You have that amazing matte formula that's pigmented and saturated. And then you have all these beautiful, intense, shifty metallics to pair with them. You have grunge tones, cool tones. You have a matte lightning shade. It's kind of more of an off-white. And then you have a matte black. You have gray. You have blues. You have greens. You have a fun, almost neon -y pop here. You have iridescent shades. This is the perfect, perfect rainbow palette everything I could ever want. If you're looking for the ultimate rainbow palette, the ultimate high quality palette, both in mattes and metallics, you're looking for special metallics, you're looking for intense, beautiful, blendable, saturated, pigmented mattes, then this is the one for you. This is number one. I've tried a lot of palettes this year, so for something to be on the top of the top of the top means it is the shiz, the best the most, the goat, okay? I don't know what I'm saying here. I think I'm starting to get delusional because I've been filming for so long, but this is number one for a good reason. That was everything for this video, guys. I know it was long. I know I said a lot. I probably repeated myself a lot, but I tried so many good palettes and I had a great year last year. 2023 was really good to me and I'm so excited to see what I'm gonna get to try for 2024. But you guys will now have to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Were you surprised by this ranking? Would you switch it up in different ways? What was your number one? favorite palette or least favorite palette from last year. I would love to hear from all of y'all. And if you're new here and you enjoy this video, you like a lot of fun, colorful makeup content, ranking videos, then please hit that subscribe button and join this little family. I would love to have you here. Also, don't forget to check out the description below. I have other videos of mine that you might be interested in watching as well as my makeup link, like what I'm wearing for my eyes, foundation, and all that good stuff in case you're curious. Now, I won't be able to link all of these palettes because I don't think the description is big enough for me to do that. But if you're wanting to see any of these palettes in action or any of my reviews just go on my channel search the palette name up and I'm sure the video will come up because I'm pretty sure I filmed with all of these palettes on my channel I will also have my contact and my social media platforms linked I'm also on Instagram as Breezy Lifestyle and Breezy underscore beauty so if you want to join my Instagram fam I would really really love that but guys thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video for hanging out with me being here making every year on youtube an amazing one for me i just appreciate you guys all so much and i just hope all of you are doing well wherever you are in the world and i'm just sending you guys so much light and love but until next time bye guys